Yeah. So I'm the founder and CTO of a company called Replicated. We have been around for about seven years and we help other software vendors ship on-prem installable versions of their software to their enterprise customers. So if you think about a typical company who's shipping multi-tenant SaaS or running it in the cloud and asking customers to send the data to their application, some of the largest enterprise customers are going to say, like, we can't do that. Maybe it's like an air gap network or maybe we have policy regulatory reasons we can't do that bring the application into us and you know, leveraging everything that Kubernetes do, does, we add a little bit to that and then allow a software company to ship an installable version of their software to their enterprise customers. Wow, that's you got it down uh, great. All right. And then for, for KubeCon, anything big announcements going on with Replicated? Yeah, I think the biggest thing that we announced this week is, yeah. you know, we have a Kubernetes distribution um, because, you know, yeah, we'd like to live in a world where everybody had Kubernetes and it was ready just to like, you know, install any software, but right. there are a lot of companies who are still early in their Kubernetes journey. So we have Curl, our Kubernetes distribution. It's actually a distribution creator, um, mm -hmm. not a distribution. And we have submitted that and achieved Kubernetes or CNCF. It's a certified distribution now. So we know it like it passes all conformance tests and anything that works on Kubernetes is going to work on our Kubernetes distribution also. And where can people find out about that? So that project, it's an open source project. It's on curl.sh, curl with a K, of course. Yeah. You know, not like hockey curl. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> like Kubernetes curl. Uh, cool. So go there to learn more about that stuff. So that's, that's very exciting. Um, and then in terms of like the, from your perspective, um, working in the industry and the cloud and Kubernetes space, what are some of the trends that you're seeing as we get into Q4? Sure. So we're definitely seeing, I think, a lot more like Kubernetes adoption. It's like it's a, it's ubiquitous. It's Kubernetes is becoming more and more of a commodity. I think we still have a long way to go. But, you know, a year ago or two years ago, I guess, at the last KubeCon in San Diego, there were a lot of companies that were still early in their Kubernetes journey and, and there still are now, but like Kubernetes exists in more places than it does. It's it's not like the the next thing that we're going to adopt. It's starting to become like the boring technology. It's becoming like it's standard, it's it's there. And I think with that, like we're unlocking like this wave of the next generation of problems, which is, you know, we can actually focus on instead of the Kubernetes API and how we're delivering software, but like more meaningful problems on top of that around security and supply chain and like, you know, supply chain has been in the news a lot lately, right. like supply chain attacks. And so I think there's a lot of a lot of trends coming out and a lot of software coming out around that. So it's no longer the new kid on the block. So now it's like in its college years, high oh, school yeah. years. That's and, a good way. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's got a whole new set of problems before it leaves the parents' house. Yeah, we're, we'll figure out what those are. Yeah. <laughs> nice. That's very cool. And then if you put a look into your crystal ball, what do you think are maybe like one or two trends that you're excited about or maybe something that people aren't talking about enough in 2022? Yeah. I mean, I think that I'm going to go back to supply chain yeah. um, as, as the answer to that one. I think yeah. people are starting to talk about it a lot. I think it's a trend. I think it's still very like unknown right now. Like there's just a lot of like it's a hard problem to solve. We know that's a problem. There's been an executive order around like, you know, securing the supply chain. There's startups that are forming around this space in particular. Um, we're shipping software and just, if you wanna run software, it really doesn't matter how you're running that. If you're running that in a tightly controlled air gapped environment or connected to the internet or whatever, like you need to know what's in that software because supply chain attacks exist regardless of how you're, you're running that software. And so I think that's a, like, that's that's the answer. Yeah. Supply chain. <laughs> supply chain, supply chain, yes. supply chain. There you go for the something to to really look forward to uh, for next year. And then in terms of KubeCon, is this your first KubeCon or your regular or? I've, I've been to like a couple Seattle, Austin. Oh, San Diego. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Excited to be back. And what, what so far has been your overall maybe like favorite moment or something that comes to mind uh, yeah. since you've been coming? So I think this Overall, like, I think this has been like a really good KubeCon just because it's like, there's a lot of pent up, you know, that we haven't had one in a long time. There's been virtual events, which have been really great. And I think, you know, CNCF has done a really good job of like managing this as a hybrid event. So there's people here in person around 3000 or so, I think, right. um, and a lot of people remote and or virtual. And I think they've done a really, really good job with that. But like, there's this like this pent up like energy and like, like it's good to be back in person and like there's only three thousand people and the LA Convention Center is massive so it feels very very spread out you're right, not right. you're feeling like too crowded but like just being back and being back in the community again feels really good. Yeah, I mean you've got to start somewhere and right. it's not gonna, you're not going to start with like five hundred thousand people all at the right. next event, right? So, exactly, exactly. Yeah, that's that's very cool. And then. Um, two more questions here. And then for people looking to get, you know, we, we talked, we get a lot of sometimes the middle school, high schoolers, we spend so much talking about the existing technology. So I always like to throw in like someone from with experience. So if they they came to you and say, Hey, Mark, I want to get involved in this space. I want to do a career in that. What would you tell them? Yeah. I mean, I think I would just 
say, you know, like it's really complicated. It's intimidating to look at like Kubernetes, like it's it's complex. The ecosystem is massive. It's only getting more complex too, right? Like, and just not to be intimidated about it, like just dive in, spin up like a Kubernetes cluster, play around, you know, Kelsey Hightower has Kubernetes the hard way. Um, which really does walk you through everything about that. But like learn networking, learn storage. Like it's not something you're gonna pick up overnight. Just like, just dig in, get your hands on it, play with it. There's a ton of like very welcoming open source projects that are like, have, you know, easy first issues. If you wanna start getting into it, you can start digging in. And like the, the community in this ecosystem is really, really welcoming. Very, very cool. Okay, and so last question for Replicated. Anything else upcoming that, that you know, be at an event or any sort of news or anything else that we should let people know about while we have you here? Yeah, I think, you know, like the same as some other folks here, we're definitely like playing it by ear. We have some stuff that we're really hopeful and looking forward to RSA, other events. Um, right now, you know, we're like, we're excited about that. We're very, very hopeful about that. But with, with you know, like COVID and everything that's going on, we definitely want to, you know, play it safe and, you know, make sure we're, we're uh, you know, not doing things in an unsafe method, manner right now. Right. So it's like, you can always predict if an event maybe still happen or so many yeah. variables, right? Right. Like we're, we're super excited to be here, but like, you know, like predicting what, where we're going to be in three months, it's like, there's things that we'd love to be a part of, but like, you know, like it's like, we also want to, you know, recognize that there's a lot of like challenges right now being able to commit to stuff yeah it's really weird because with trade shows you have to be like all in there's so many oh, yeah. logistics and flights and hotels and so now we're having to sort of like be like halfway in right or maybe we'll do hybrid and so yeah, yeah it's always exactly a challenge as far as that stuff goes and then so mark's our last guest if anyone has questions out there throw them in we're going to start to wrap up our first ever d zone live at kubecon so if anyone has questions throw those into into the chat here today. Kellett, on your side, anything else we should throw to Mark or to note as we wrap it up here? So what is, yeah, I do, you know, I have a, a couple questions, but I'll keep it really short. Um, what kinds of customers are you working with that are replicating onto on-prem? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, we like work across all verticals, right? We started off with developer tools because developer tools, it's its anybody who's shipping a Kubernetes app, yeah. first of all. We see a lot of demand for it in, you know, ML and AI, we see it in security tools, we see it in developer tools. There's um, really anybody who has, like their application's gonna have access to sensitive data. Um, right. Enterprise customers wanna run that. And Kubernetes is this common API that really does make it easy to do. You're already running it in Kubernetes uh, as a Kubernetes application in the cloud like your enterprise customer can run it in Kubernetes now too. Okay, awesome. And then, so who, who, can you tell us a little bit about like who your core customers are? Like who, who are, are customers you're excited to work with? Can you talk about your customers? Yeah, sure. Like we have like a bunch of them. Most of them are listed on our website. Um, but, you know, we, we work with like some of our early customers are like HashiCorp and, and, and CircleCI and, and UiPath and, you know, and, and Puppet customers like this who really are like, like there are other developed, like really, really strong development teams who could like ship on-prem software and like we're, they're partnering with us because they can focus on like their core business and like the differentiating parts of what they're trying to ship and let us like do Deal with some the, of the, yeah, the, the on-prem on stuff. stuff. Yeah. And then the, the other, the last question I had for you is how did you get into yeah. technology and how did you end up where you are now? So I started off my career as like a, a network and a systems engineer. I was driving around replacing servers at like, you know, <laughs> network servers and like Cisco routers and things like this and yep. realizing like, hey, that, that, that's no fun. It doesn't scale. It's super manual, like automation and like just really interested in writing code. And like I became an app developer and mm -hmm. then, you know, I have that like systems background and then like found like DevOps and infrastructure and hey, automation is code and infrastructure is code. It's just like kind of like the combination of the two things, just a perfect thing for me. Like it's the thing I'm passionate about and like the thing I want to do, which is write code to solve these problems in a in a scalable way. Do you ever do you think there will ever come a time where all of that work has been abstracted away and there's no need for people? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> um, yeah, but like, you know, there's going to be other needs for us. Like yeah, we'll yeah, we'll exactly. move to a different layer of the stack. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. And how big is your team? So as a company, we're we're around 100 people right now. Okay, cool. Yeah. And when did, your, when did you launch? So we've been around for seven years, um, which is kind of predates Kubernetes. So we actually did write like a container scheduling orchestration system before Kubernetes. And we are thankful oh, cool. that Kubernetes is here now. And, like, <laughs> we don't have to do that. Like we can actually like, like do the things that are differentiating to us because yes. now there's this common API that everybody can talk yeah, to. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah.
cool. Well, thanks for uh, yeah sharing your background. I think that's always interesting to hear how people end up where they uh, yeah where they are now. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. All right. So here we go. That was Kellett Atkinson, our our chief of our product, head of our product, director of our product, um, on D Zone side of things. So really good to have our first ever live um, event from KubeCon in 2021, which saying live event in person mm -hmm. seems a little bit crazy, but hopefully this will be the start of a, a lot more things. Um, KubeCon's back in Europe in Valencia here coming up in six months and then coming back to Detroit. Um, definitely be sure to check out Replicated. Y'all are on Twitter too. You're on Twitter? Yep. Replicated HQ. Like Replicated HQ on Twitter and then you're on Twitter. MC Code. MC Code, yeah, awesome. <laughs> MC Code, I don't, that sounds like a band name, maybe. It's too. been around for a while, so yeah. Nice, that's a very cool MC Code. So there you go, Mark Campbell with Replicated to close us out for our D Zone Live, KubeCon Live edition.